Hello, uh, welcome to today's uh, Mario meets the RoboCat, lessons from dog food in Tecton. My name is Devya Mukherjee. I'm an engineer at Google working on the Tecton project. Andrea? And my name is, uh, my name is Andrea Frittoli. I'm an engineer at IBM, also working on the Tecton project. Devya? Sure. Uh, so in today's talk, we will start with a brief introduction to Tecton. We'll talk a little bit about plumbing, which is like an umbrella term we use to describe our dog fooding experiments that is running using Tecton for Tecton. We will do a deep dive into Tecton continuous integration, how we're using Tecton for our own continuous integration. We'll show a quick demo of our efforts and we'll end with some lessons learned and future work. Over. So what is Tecton? Over to Andrea. So Tecton is a framework for creating a CI CD pipeline. Uh, this pipeline can be uh, run from uh, in any kind of environment, starting from your laptop or uh, in a cloud, whether it is on-premise or a public cloud. Uh, so it gives you full flexibility. Uh, Tecton is an open source uh, software, which is hosted uh, at the CD Foundation, Continuous Delivery Foundation. It was actually one of the founding um, project of the foundation itself. So Tecton benefits from um, a great community of contributors. It comes from different companies like Google, Red Hat, CloudBees, IBM, Pivotal, and many more. And it also has a, a flourishing um, community of users. So apart from the contributing company, we also have uh, contributor uh, users uh, like um, Puppet or the IQ2 or um, other companies that are building products uh, on top of uh, Tecton itself. So um, what are uh, the goals for Tecton? So Tecton really revolves around uh, reusability and standardizations. So the goal for Tecton is not to uh, take over the entire CI/CD space, which is uh, quite busy and there are a lot of so dedicated solutions for specific projects. Uh, Tecton tries to create building blocks that can be used uh, in this space and integrate well with many other solutions that are existing, like JenkinX, Scaffold, Native, and so forth. And it also tries to do um, the job on the specific building blocks um, very well to create like best practices for running um, tasks and, and pipelines. It also uh, is not uh, opinionated in the sense that um, it gives you complete flexibility in what you want to do in your pipeline. So if you're building, for instance, a container images, uh, you don't, you're not constrained to any specific tool. You can use uh, the tool of your preference and you can deploy um, your uh, pipeline to different environments and you can use them to deploy your application in different kind of environments. Okay, uh, so the Tecton uh, universe today consists of a few different projects. Uh, at the core are pipelines, which, as Andrea mentioned, are the core building primitives for your CI CD systems. This includes steps, pipelines, and tasks. We will go into a little bit more detail about these in the next few slides. We also have triggers, which actually allows you to run these things, your pipelines, continuously. That is, it allows you to trigger pipelines based on events. Uh, Complementing that is the catalog, which is where the community can share reusable tasks and pipeline definitions, and other people in the community can reuse those things. Uh, and then we have a hub, which is a web interface on top of the catalog. So think something like Docker Hub, but for your Tecton tasks. Uh, next up, we have tooling. We have dashboard, which is a nice web interface for your Tecton installation. You can look at your pipeline tasks, etc. We also have TKN, which is a powerful CLI tool for interacting with Tecton. We have an operator to manage your Tecton installation and your Tecton upgrades. Finally, we have experimental. So this is a repo where we do a lot of our experiments uh, with Tecton. So we ex examples of experiments would include things like storing uh, task and pipeline run results in a queryable format, uh, experimenting with image formats for uh, bundling your Tecton tasks, pipelines, and other complementary resources, experiments with uh, supply chain security, such as signing and verifying bills, et cetera, et cetera. So now we'll go into a little bit more details about Tecton pipelines. So the most basic primitive is a step, which is which is basically a command that you run in a container. You can specify other things such as volume and environment variables, but the step is the most basic primitive. Uh, next step is a task, 
a task is a sequence of steps that run in the same part. Tasks run to completion, so or until one of the steps in a task fails. They usually map to a single Kubernetes pod. Uh, tasks can define and declare their own inputs and produce results, which is how you can chain tasks in pipelines. Um, a pipeline is basically a graph of tasks with uh, declared inputs and outputs. The advantage with a pipeline is that you can run your tasks in parallel if needed or in sequential uh, to form your entire CI/CD workflow. So steps, tasks, and pipelines are basically how you define your CI/CD workflow. How you invoke them is via task run and pipeline run. So pipeline run, as the name suggests, is one invocation of a single pipeline. Task run is the same for a task. Uh, you, this is where you provide your inputs and outputs uh, for your task, and you actually run your pipeline to completion. Uh, next up is triggers. And over to Andrea for talking about triggers. Thank you, Dibia. Um, so um, once you have your pipelines, uh, you may want to trigger them um, manually, so to say, by creating a pipeline run. Uh, but in a large majority of the use cases, um, you may want to run a pipeline as a consequence of a certain event that happened. Event can be anything triggered by a service um, in the cloud or a service that you rely on that you want to uh, react to. So typically uh, something like uh, webhooks triggered by uh, GitHub or GitLab or your Git hosting system. So uh, Tecton triggers was created as part of the Tecton um, to handle this kind of use cases. Also, Tecton triggers define its own primitives. Uh, the first one is the event listener, which is the component which receives the events. The event is received over HTTP or HTTPS as composed by um, headers and payload and can come directly um, from the publisher or perhaps through a event uh, broker. And so the next primitive um, is interceptor. Uh, because you may not want to process all the events that you're receiving to your event listener. So interceptors were defined and we have a few stock ones like uh, GitHub or GitLab interceptors that are able to, first of all, validate that uh, the request that was received is valid and verify that the token is a correct one. And also uh, they allow to, to filter based on the type of event uh, or the content of the event. And uh, they are extensible. It's possible to define custom interceptor that can also um, add extra content to the payload or to the header of uh, the message. So the next, uh, the next uh, primitive are the trigger bindings. The trigger binding are used to extract relevant information from the headers and the payload of the incoming message into parameters that are then passed to the trigger template, which is the final uh, primitive of triggers. Trigger template are defined as the name suggests to um, create templates for the resources that needs to be triggered as a result of the event. So typically you will have inside a pipeline run definition that can be, can be filled in uh, with inputs from the parameters that were extracted from the headers and the body via the bindings. So now that we have an overview um, of uh, what Tecton is, we're going to look more into how we run uh, our infrastructure for Tecton that we call uh, plumbing or Marius plumbing. So if you look in the dictionary, plumbing is the system of pipes, tanks, fittings, and other apparatus required for the water supply, heating, and sanitation in a building. For Tecton, this uh, means the combination of tools and configuration that uh, we use to um, build everything which is needed by Tecton in terms of automation, which means and includes uh, the CI system that we use for Tecton itself and all the CD tasks uh, for Tecton. So how we do GitOps, for instance, keeping Tecton tasks in sync with our cluster, do release management and um, GitHub, uh, GitHub organization uh, management, for instance. And uh, up to you, uh, DPM. OK, so Tecton, the project, was created out of the Knative serverless project. And one of the consequences of that is we inherited the same CI CD system initially that they use. Uh, so Knative and a lot of uh, Knative Kubernetes and a lot of other projects in the in this cloud native world use a tool called Plow, 
which is a Kubernetes-based CI/CD tool that was built for the Kubernetes project. Uh, it's very powerful, it's very flexible, has a large uh, uh, share of plugins that you could use to do things beyond just your basic CI/CD. So that's where we started. And our goal was to not uh, get rid of Prow initially, but to do like do this in a step-by-step -step basis. So we, our first step in dog fooding was to actually start releasing Tekton by using Tekton. And to do this, we built a simple pipeline that would release our binaries and our container images and our manifests using Tekton. And initially, this was something that people would invoke manually. So an engineer would manually invoke the pipeline that would release Tekton. Uh, next step there was to set up a dedicated cluster for our dog fooding experiment. So we set up a Kubernetes cluster just to do that. And finally, we also tried to integrate Tekton into Prow. So Prow as a Tekton plugin, so you could uh, your single Prow job could actually run your Tekton pipeline. Uh, if you're more interested in details of the early days of our dog fooding, uh, in the previous KubeCon in San Diego, we gave a talk about uh, this portion of our dog fooding experiments. So next up, once we had those basic dog fooding steps, the next step was to actually run them continuously. Uh, by this time, the Triggers project had its first release, so we could start doing this. The first step we did there was to create 90 releases for all of our Tekton projects. And we did this using a combination of Tekton Triggers, Tekton Pipelines, and your standard Kubernetes cron jobs. Uh, so now, instead of an uh, engineer having to manually invoke a release, you could just have nightly releases every single night. Uh, next up, beyond just your nightly releases, we started doing nightly builds for our infrastructure containers. So this is not just code, but your configuration and other uh, infrastructure containers that we might need. Uh, once we had these nightly releases, we needed a place to deploy all of these stuff. So we created this cluster called the RoboCat. The RoboCat cluster is where we do all of our continuous delivery experiments. Uh, so we set up our Tekton triggers and our Tekton pipelines to uh, deploy our nightly Tekton releases to the RoboCat cluster. So we started with deploying just the releases, but then we started doing more. So we started deploying our configuration data, config maps, other Tekton resources uh, such as Tekton uh, pipelines and Tekton tasks so that they would remain in sync with uh, the definition in our Git repos. And we did more than just that. We also used uh, GitOps and in combination with Tekton uh, triggers and pipelines to automate our org management. So today, if you want to join the Tekton CD org, you add yourself to a file in our community repository, open a pull request. Once the request gets merged, we have a trigger listening uh, and then that will, uh, which will trigger a task that will uh, add you to the arc by itself. So that was uh, how we ended up doing continuous delivery for, for Tekton using Tekton. The next step in our dog fooding uh, journey was to use Tekton for our own continuous integration needs. Uh, and this is where Andrea will describe in a little, more, little bit more detail about our CI journey. Over to you. Thank you, Debbie. So indeed, we started working on uh, focusing on CI and doing CI with uh, Tekton. It was great that we could transition uh, from Prow uh, that we are still using for some of our CI needs to, to Tekton and transition gradually. So um, this is how the uh, setup that we're using today looks like. As you uh, may imagine, the entry point for our CI setup is the uh, it's an event uh, listener from Tekton Triggers that uh, is set up as a saying that receives webhooks from uh, from GitHub here uh, on top on the left. Events are triggered by um, GitHub, go through a number of filters. There, um, first we validate the token, then we filter based on the repo that generated the trigger and the type of event. It could be a pull request or a comment or other type of events. Um, we are also working on setting up a filter for um, verifying that whether a user belongs to the Tekton CD org or not. And because not, not all of the events from GitHub are identical in terms of content as well, um, so we need to do some work to adapt them. And this is where overlays come into place. So this is the, the yellow box here on the right hand side. Uh, so uh, for instance, the comment event from GitHub does not contain much detail about the PR, and, but this detail we need to run the CI job when we do that as a reaction to a comment. So we use a custom, um, a custom component combined with the overlay to add this information um, to the payload, which is then passed to the bindings in the green boxes below. So uh, we have multiple bindings here. Um, it's great that um, it is possible to use a combination of bindings so that each binding has a specific 
related to a specific source of information. So in this case, we have one binding, which is for general GitHub events, and it contains information that is available to all events. And then we have uh, event-specific bindings on top. So the resulting set of parameters that is extracted from the headers and payload of the GitHub event is then passed to a trigger template and ultimately to the pipelines in the middle of the picture here. So we have a few uh, uh, different trigger templates. Uh, we have uh, one trigger template which contains CI jobs that are common to all repositories. Um, and this is uh, great because it allows us to define um, a few jobs for checks that we want to enforce on all repositories. And then we have trigger templates, which are uh, repo specific, like for the plumbing repo, where we host our infrastructure. We have a set of pipelines uh, that are shown uh, here in the middle. In each pipeline, we have um, the purple diamonds, their conditions, and they're used to optimize execution of CI jobs. Um, in the sense that um, we don't always need to run all the jobs that are defined in our infrastructure, because for instance, some of the job they will, um, build a container image um, and we have multiple container images so we it only makes sense to run the jobs uh, to build the container images that have been modified uh, within the pr that we are testing so um after the conditions are passed if their condition are passed the actual ci job in the blue box um, which is a task is executed so we think we're doing things like linting uh, the go code linting yaml running unit tests, uh, building container images, and so forth. These pipelines are also annotated with information from um, the original event, uh, like the PR number and the repository that we're triggered on. And this is useful because uh, whenever a pipeline uh, is started um, or is completed, it will send a cloud event, these uh, red arrows here on the right-hand side. These cloud events, they're um, delivered uh, to an internal event listener, which will take the information out of the annotation and use it and use it to update the check status back into GitHub so that when you're looking into the GitHub interface, you can see the check has started to run and it's, and it's finished successfully or failed. And also when it starts to run, it gets a link into the Tecton dashboard so that you can stream the logs while the CI job is running. Because we did a lot of work in, on CI itself, it, it meant that um, we had uh, to have a way to test the changes to the CI system itself. And in the beginning, we were just experimenting. So we just um, updated the task and the pipelines and all the resources in the cluster directly. But once we started having one or two production um, jobs, we could not do that. So we didn't want to go really trial and error, modify the jobs, see if CI is still running. Uh, that was not a viable uh, solution. So we decided to um, build a way to uh, that allows us to test the CI uh, changes in CI itself, which has a number of uh, benefits. So first of all, it removes the need to have access to the CI cluster, which is also good practice, but also enables people who does not have access to the production cluster to do changes on CI and test them. Um, it reduces the need to have own infrastructure to run a copy of CI system on your own infrastructure. And it's also very helpful for troubleshooting uh, because imagine that you're doing a change, even not to the CI system, even to the pipelines. And you see a failure, but you don't have enough information in the logs to actually understand what's going on. So you can alter uh, the CI job to uh, inject more um, verbosity, for instance, or inject more information. Uh, so that the next time it runs, uh, it will show you the information that you need to troubleshoot what's going on. So the way we achieve this um, is that we deploy in isolation within a namespace a copy of the CI system, which is uh, seeded out of the PR. So it contains the definitions that are in the PR itself. And then uh, we forward a cloud event from the CI job that creates uh, the namespace into the newly created event listener. Um, that this includes annotations with the original information from the GitHub event, uh, so that uh, through bindings, we extract the same information that we would extract from the original event and pass it to the CI pipelines that are able to run then based on the definition um, that, I, that is in the PR. So let's um, see this in action. 
going to share my screen. So um, I'm going to demonstrate this using the plumbing repo, which is where we store our infrastructure definition and our container images uh, definition as well. So I have a branch ready here. That's a very small change to one of the our container images. It changes the release version. This is uh, for the hub uh, image that we use. So let's push this um, as a PR to get the demo running. So kubecon 2020 sounds good. OK, so the PR is created. And here I'm watching the Tecton CI namespace, which is where we run our CI jobs. And you can see that five pipelines are started right away. So here we have things like um, this test Tecton CI, which is a special job, which is used for the testing CI use case. And otherwise, we have Hub Build, Tekken, Build, and KubeCDL Build. Those pipelines are there to run uh, to build container images. And then we have the Golang linker. And you see that some of the uh, jobs are completing right away very quickly in a few uh, 20 seconds or so. And if we look at the list of the tasks that uh, are running in this namespace, you see some of them are very long names. It include check, git, check names, and some of them are failed. So these are actually the, the checks, the, the diamonds in the picture that I showed earlier. Um, and they're filtering out some of the CI jobs. And this explains why some of the jobs were failing so quickly. And you can see that the hub build is still running because we modified the hub image. And the linter is still running. Oh, no, it's actually just finished. And we can go and, and look at this into uh, GitHub directly. So if we refresh, we have our new PR here. So we open the PR. And we can see here our free CI jobs. And if I look, click on the details for the hub, for instance, I can see here in the Tecton CI namespace, our pipeline is running and the build image task is running. So, oh, unfortunately it failed. So I click on it and have a look at what, what went wrong. So I got a lot of information, info details. These are probably not very relevant to me. Um, so it just says, OK, it failed. And here, it's, it's a bit abrupt, I guess. And here is the error. So well, it looks like release 2 was not really a good idea. So maybe we should try to make this CI job a bit more friendly and roll back our changes as well as a next step. Um, OK, so let's go back to our PR. So this is a file in the plumbing repo where we host the definition of the sum of our CI jobs. In this case, I'm looking at the build push Kanika, which you use to um, build container images. So what I'm going to do, I want to make the job a little bit more friendly. So I will add a step into it. And let's call it hello kubecon. And then probably just need busy box. It's a simple command that we want to run. Hello, the count 2020. And there we go. And then let's remove information we don't need from Canico. So we can probably set the verbosity. to be arrow. Then I update the CPR. And there you go. And if you look into um, the namespace, you'll see that five new pipelines are starting right away. So this time, let's have a closer look at the test tech on CI1. You'll see in a few seconds that the other ones are uh, stopping right away. Um, but let's have a look at this pipe run, uh, pipeline run. This is in the tech on CI new system. And then we can look at the metadata using JQ.
Oh, sorry. Check your one parse. YAML. Okay, so you can see we have a number of extra annotation on this job that can include all the information that was from the original GitHub uh, event, like the type of event, the delivery ID, and so forth. And if you look at the uh, pipelines that ran for the second time, you can see um, this one was marked as a tech and CI was marked as succeeded, and all the others are marked as completed. Completed is a sign that something was skipped inside the pipeline. And um, in fact, if you look at the tasks, uh, you will see that we're uh, several failed ones. So the, this means all these jobs were not executed, um, only this tech and CI one. So why is that? Let's have a look at the log. So what? Uh, what this job does? Um, it creates a new namespace, um, as I mentioned, and it deploys the entire CI system into it. And then finally, once the new CI system is up and running, it will send a cloud event to it here, and you can see the namespace is a different one. So if you go look at the pipelines in that namespace instead of um, Python CI, you can see that the, the jobs are running here in this new namespace. So if we go back to the PR, we see the jobs running. And this time, um, we can notice that the namespace is different here. We got PR28, and the job looks a bit different. So we have our hello kubecon step. And then the build and push still failed because I did not update the release number. But we don't have all the information that was there before, and we don't need. So we could test a new CI change live. And this completes the demo. So what did we learn from this? Um, do you DBO to tell us more about it? Sure. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for that demo. Uh, so fixing our pipes, AKA future work. So first off, what did we learn? Uh, in the beginning, we made all of the mistakes. Actually, still, we are making all of the mistakes. You know, simple things like not verifying inputs, overriding our previous release, etc. So basically, all of the manual errors uh, that you can imagine. So. Uh, we sort of fixed some of that by using automation, triggers, et cetera. Uh, we also, be, beyond just your task and pipelines, we also realized the importance of automating our entire infrastructure setup after we had a security incident that had that uh, for which we had to basically refresh all of our long-lived secrets. Uh, there is a lot of YAML. If you notice the diagrams that Andrea showed, there is a lot of moving parts. So there is a lot of boilerplate. We have started using Customize, which helps quite a bit. But in the future, we are looking at custom tasks or DSLs that might actually make this stuff a little bit more concise. Uh, testing changes to the CI setup is hard, especially locally, though with a system like the one that Andrea demoed, that becomes quite a bit easier. Tracing is a big problem. So we have started, we heavily use labels like Andrea showed labels and annotations and standard Kubernetes tooling, but some kind of like more inbuilt integration would be very, very nice. We also realized that not everything needs to run as pod for tasks such as like a wait task that you probably don't want to create a pod that just waits for two hours. So we are working on that. Uh, we also realized the value of documentation as always, like there's always documentation, there could always be more. So uh, based on some of our, uh, our lessons, we are doing a lot of work. So we're looking at what we call the new pipes that we're building. So we have task results, which will allow us to uh, clean up, do clean up of our namespaces, et cetera, and things like notifications uh, uh, much more easily. We have simple conditionals where a new condition does not spin up a new pod. We are looking into exploring more complicated pipelines using switches and loops. Uh, we are looking into bundling your Tekton task, your pipelines, your conditions, triggers, all of that into a bundle that can be referenced into like a image registry. 
sort of similar to a Docker image. That would help a lot. We are doing a lot of more experimentations on metrics and debugging and tracing and how to do that better. Uh, we mentioned custom tasks where users can bring in their own kind of tasks that don't necessarily have to spin up a new pod each time. We're uh, experimenting with making triggers easier so that we can, a user can just write their trigger configuration without having to deal with how to ex uh, expose an event listener. Uh, for the event listener, we are looking at using event listeners as a k-native service, so you get all the benefits of a serverless service. Uh, and finally, we are looking at ephemeral credentials, so that when something goes wrong, you don't have to uh, change all of your long-lived secrets at once, but instead, uh, we have security built in by default by using short-lived tokens using something like the GitHub app. Specifically for the dog fooding CI side, uh, we are also looking at making our log parsing, uh, test result dashboard, uh, maybe building in test fake analysis, which would make it easier to debug problems instead of just having to parse through all of the logs. Uh, for CI itself, we are looking at reusing more tasks from the catalog instead of uh, building our own tasks. Uh, we are looking at using end-to-end -end tests uh, for Tekton pipelines, uh, easily testing not just uh, Tekton uh, changes to our CI pipeline, but infrastructure containers. Uh, running our tests on more clouds instead of just Google Cloud, uh, improving our CI service uh, monitoring, improving the monitoring of our CI services. So when something goes wrong, we have a easy, we know easily what's going wrong. And finally, moving some of our slash commands uh, to using Tekton instead of Prom. So with that, I'll turn it over to Andrea for the final couple of slides. Yeah. So thank you, DBO. So we. We are aim to be a friendly and welcoming community. Um, so come and join us. I mean, whether you're a user, you want to share your use cases or your stories um, and issues that you've encountered, or whether you want to come and contribute to our code, the documentation, or just hang out with us. Uh, we are on Slack, and here is a link to, jo the, to join the community on Slack. And um, yeah, so. Here is a thank you for listening to the uh, our talk today, and thank you, Christy, for the great uh, drawings uh, that you provided us with for for our talk. And um, yeah, here is a number of links and references that you can use to get started on Tecton and to get in touch with us. And uh, the slides will be shared after the conference, so don't worry, you will have access to all these links. And thank you again. Goodbye. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending to our talk. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we can go through some of the questions. Okay. We're just going to. Yeah, we are just going to go start with the oldest one first and go through them. So I'm going to read out the oldest question first. Andre, if you want to answer, then maybe we can switch or we can figure that out. OK, uh, so first question was, we are at Greenfield starting with OpenShift. Do you think we can capitalize on Tekton for CI and CD? Yeah, um, so Tekton is available as part of OpenShift. It's called um, OpenShift. Uh, pipelines. Um, I think I believe uh, since OpenShift version dot four dot three was initially available, so it's included in there. Uh, so you definitely can use Tekton as part of OpenShift. And maybe the next, yeah. Um, so there is also another question on Red Hat OpenShift provides Tekton, Argo, CD, both as operators. Do they complement each other? Um, you can use them both. And yes, you can. Uh, they don't specifically um, integrate with each other, but you can definitely complement the, the two of them. You can use Tekton for automating some of your uh, pipelines on you know, CI side, for instance, and then CD, Argo CD for the CD needs. Yep. Um, I can jump to the next question. I saw there were a few questions about getting the link to the slides, which are now up on Shed. So please go check that out. 
Uh, I'll skip to number seven, which says Tecton can be user in a vanilla way, defining native pipelines, but is also hidden in other tools that abstract its functionalities, like Jenkins X. Is that right? Tecton is a foundational project in the sense it can be used to build other CI CD tools. Uh, yeah, you are correct. So like we showed in this demo, you can use Tecton by itself, but it's also uh, not very opinionated. So it can be used as like the foundation for building other tools, uh, as you mentioned Jenkins X and other examples. Um. Okay, so um, we have a question about uh, do you somehow archive your pipeline runs if you kept a CRD inside the cluster? Um, so this is a very good question. And do we clean up unnecessary ones? Um, so today for cleanup, um, we use cron jobs basically to clean uh, things out. And you can use labels or annotation to select things that you want to keep in your cluster. But we don't have an active facility for that. We do have an experimental project. Uh, it's on Tecton CD Experimental uh, for our results API. And the idea is exactly to archive pipeline runs and task runs outside of CRD. So this is something that has been worked on and we hope to deploy it soon in our dog footing cluster. OK. Uh, next one was using triggers may also trigger tasks instead of pipelines. And yes, absolutely. You can trigger task runs and pipeline runs both. Uh, next step, I see a question about if I consider now which CD tool to use. Looks like Tecton and Argo CD are two popular candidates. Uh, when should I use each? To which types of work is Tecton most suitable for? Thanks. OK, I can take this one too. Um, so Tecton, as DBS as said, is tends to be not very opinionated. So with other uh, solutions, you might find some more constraint or more opinions how you're going to set up your pipelines, whether they are CI or CD pipelines. So depending if you need like a quick head start and you want to have something that you get up and running really fast on a full solution, uh, or you want to have the full flexibility and building blocks and reusability, so you may go one direction or the other. Um, so you can for sure, um, also use um, Tecton for certain aspects and uh, Argo CD uh, for others as well. So you don't have to necessarily, necessarily choose between the two. It very much depends on your use cases. And the next question is, how do you manage permission inside Tecton dashboard? To each team uh, see only their task and pipelines. Um, so. We don't have um, uh, ability in dashboard today to like log in with accounts, but uh, it is possible to deploy the dashboard uh, with a scope on specific namespaces. So you can have multiple instances of uh, your dashboard um, that are only accessible by different teams, and they can then restrict visibility in terms of uh, pipelines and tasks. Also, the dashboard can be deployed uh, both in full uh, mode or also in read all the mode, which we use in the public dashboard for Tecton uh, that allows you only to see pipelines but not start new ones. Okay, uh, moving on. Do we require a Kubernetes cluster for running Tecton pipelines? Uh, the answer today is yes, though we uh, the way we build our APIs today is to make sure we are not super coupled to Kubernetes so that in the future we can support more. Uh, but today, yeah, you need a Kubernetes cluster to run Tecton. Uh, next up is, is Tecton CLI image supported on multi-architecture platforms? Um, I know we've been doing some work on like supporting like IBM, Z-Series, et cetera, and that's like ongoing work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we, we kicked off the effort there. Yep. So next up is does Tecton have batching release trains yet or ever? If there isn't yet, would it fit in as a trigger that is called by other triggers? Um, I can take this one. Um, so as I was saying, Tecton is not really opinionated, so it doesn't like really give you like 
uh, of the shells uh, structure, like pipelines for doing CD. But you can definitely automate uh, this kind of uh, setup, uh, like release trains. We use Tecton to run our releases for Tecton. And if you want to have things like uh, manual approval steps between uh, releases, for instance, to move the release across uh, multiple environments. Um, we are working on defining things like uh, custom tasks that will allow in the future to um, have a, a task which is not necessarily a pod running in a Kubernetes cluster, but a generic uh, event that you might want to, to have in your pipeline. It could be like a manual approval or any kind of integration in the system. Maybe. Okay, uh, if my org, oh, sorry, uh, I've skipped one. We are seeing a bottleneck using Tecton, which is that you cannot specify the resources to the pod, which means we are unable to run resource demanding builds and tests, otherwise the, otherwise the tool works awesome. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrea, but I think you should be able to specify limits on, on your task runs, pipeline runs. Um. Yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, we have a pod template that can be used in the runs. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, because um, the, pod, the steps in uh, our containers that are executed in the pod, um, when you have multiple steps in a, in a task, what we do, we take the maximum resources and limits for, for the largest step, and we use that as the, the yeah. one to be used for the pod because they're going to be executed sequentially. So we don't want to uh, request the resources for the, the whole set of steps together. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, next up was uh, the overhead of a whole Kubernetes cluster for Tecton not worth it. Would a one node cluster be acceptable? Does it play nice with K3S? So Tecton is very lightweight right now. It, the controller is just a single pod deployment uh, If and then the scalability basically then depends on uh, how much, what kind of workloads you're running. So if you want to get started with a one node Kubernetes cluster, you should be able to just try it out with that. And given uh, if you increase uh, the number of task runs or pipeline runs that you're trying to execute, you might want to scale out. But yeah, you can definitely start with a one node to get started. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're running like K3S or Minikube or things like that on your laptop, you can run the same thing that you run in your CI CD on your laptop. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we leverage various webhook features available to have automated build trigger pipeline, kind of self-reliant? Uh, so if I'm understanding this correctly, this is sort of the problem that the triggers project solves uh, within Tecton. So you should be able to set up webhooks so that you can trigger uh, your pipelines based on git pushes or git tags, pull requests, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Where is it actually running? Who provides the hosts? Uh, so this is our demo, uh, think, correct me again, was running in a, in a Kubernetes cluster. This was most of our test infrastructure is hosted on Google Cloud for now. Uh, that's just where it was started, but yes. Yeah, um, well, actually, for, for the demo itself, I was running it on IBM Cloud. Uh, but uh, the, this normal CI system, we uh, we run it on um, on Google Cloud, which is actually a nice uh, demo as well of the portability of Tecton and uh, our CI pipelines across clouds. Uh, GitHub link used in the demo is, I think, just the plumbing repo. We can put that on the uh, the Slack so folks can take a look. Yeah. Okay. We only have two minutes left, so I will go through these questions. Uh, as I understand, Tecton creates a new part for every job. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Creating a new pod for every job is how Tecton works today, but we are working on a new feature called custom tasks where you should, where you'd be able to define your own tasks uh, and where tasks ne don't necessarily create their own pods. So an example might be something like a wait task where you won't spin up a pod and sleep for five minutes or something. So something like that. Is there a thing as conditional tasks? Indeed, there is one today. We use them in the demo, and there is a new version of those coming that would make them even better. 
yeah, yeah, we're going to provide alternative way to our conditions that do not necessarily use bots, for instance. It's also going back to the performance questions. And we are in general looking into performance and because we want this to, to keep the, the footprint as small as possible. Um, so yeah, we are working on adding more tracing and uh, investigating on any performance bottleneck that we may find. All right, uh, so we are going to have to wrap up our question and answer session right now. If you're on the KubeCon CICD uh, channel, uh, we can provide uh, further answers through the questions that we have not managed to answer yet. Yeah. So thank you again for joining. Thank you.